But this radical dream of big government socialism is stalled out at the moment. So at Speaker Pelosi's direction, President Biden drove up to Capitol Hill on October the 1st, and according to one representative, told House Democrats that in order to get the infrastructure bill done, quote, we have to get this agreement on the big government socialism bill through via re re reconciliation. According to a House Democrat, the president said that he wanted, quote, both bills to go at the same time, and specifically praised the far left House members who were exuberant following the remarks, according to a Congressional Progressive Caucus member. In other words, the far left is in charge, and President Biden embraces that fact. His actions have made clear that the infrastructure bill is merely a tool to pass this big government socialism legislation. That was Republican Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty speaking on the Senate floor October 5th, 2021. His focus was the infrastructure bill, but his mention of what he called the far left, the Congressional Progressive Caucus, being in charge left us wondering, 30 years after it began, is the Congressional Progressive Caucus in charge? In this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly, we'll remember several members of the Progressive Caucus from the early days and see where they are now after this. Formed in 1991, the Congressional Progressive Caucus now claims nearly 100 members, making it the largest ideological caucus in the Democratic Party. In its early days, its membership was much smaller, but many of its early members stayed in Congress and have since become prominent leaders. This will be a Where Are They Now podcast, spotlighting the Progressive Caucus. We'll begin with Bernie Sanders. On January 3, 1995, Bernie Sanders was a congressman from Vermont when he kicked off a Progressive Caucus press conference following the Republican takeover of the House. The Republicans are proposing to lower taxes on the wealthy and cut back severely on programs needed by the poor, the elderly, and our children. And what the Progressive Caucus is about is saying, no, you won't get away with that. At a time when the Cold War has ended, when all over the world people are thankful that the conflict that had gone on for generations between the Soviet Union and the United States is over, when Russia wants to join NATO, when American corporations are investing in tunes of billions of dollars in China, the Republicans want to increase military spending. And at the same time, they want to cut back on food stamps which go often to hungry children on the WIC program, on the school lunch and breakfast programs, on child care, on affordable housing, and on help for the blind and disabled. Frankly, I don't think that that is what America stands for. Tax cuts for the richest people, increased military spending when the Cold War is over, and causing more pain for the most vulnerable people at our society. Now, not only will many of us in the Progressive Caucus fight back against various aspects of the contract for America, but we also intend to bring forward alternative ideas that we think will make sense to the American people. That was Congressman Bernie Sanders. Today, Senator Bernie Sanders is chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. Also speaking at that January 3, 1995 Progressive Caucus press conference, Democratic New York Congressman Jerry Nadler. Thank you very much. During uh, this time of stepped up and downright vicious assaults on low and middle income Americans, the role of the Progressive Caucus will become more crucial uh, than even before. We agree with many of our colleagues and with, the pr with many of the observations in the press that the electorate is angry. The election showed that. It's a fact that cannot be denied. Of course the voters are angry. Millions of our constituents remain unemployed. 80% of wage earners earn the same in real dollars or substantially less than they did 20 years ago. Even among those who are employed, millions do not have health care. Of course the electorate is angry. Will massive sweeping cuts in agencies that help the poor improve the lives of these Americans? I don't think so. Will establishing orphanages for the children of teenage mothers improve the lives of these Americans? I don't think so. Will a repeal of the assault weapons ban improve the lives of these Americans? I don't think so. Today, Jerry Nadler is still a member of Congress. 
and he's now chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Another Progressive Caucus press conference a few weeks later to discuss a proposed 11-bill alternative to the Republican Contract with America. At the time, the Progressive Caucus had 32 House members. Ten of them spoke at this January 18, 1995 press conference. Among them, California Democratic Representative Maxine Waters. Thank you very much. I am very pleased to be here today to join with my friends in the Progressive Caucus and announce our answer to the so-called Contract for America. Let me be clear. There may be some points of agreement with the contract. We are fundamentally opposed to its intent, its thrust, most importantly to its impact on Americans. We believe the contract to be a retreat, a return to trickle-down economics, and an abandonment of low-income and working-class America. Our role in the opposition is to oppose bad ideas, but it is also to propose better alternatives. That is what the Progressive Caucus is doing today. Not only do we disagree with the notion that tax breaks for the wealthy will bring about economic fairness, we have our own vision for America. We have our own priorities. We believe the American people share our views. Today, like Jerry Nadler, Maxine Waters is still in Congress. And again, like Jerry Nadler, she now chairs a committee, the House Financial Services Committee. Let's do another one. Let's go back even further. March 4th, 1992, the House Rules Committee is debating the fiscal year 1993 budget resolution. Among the witnesses, another Democratic Congresswoman from California, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you know, it's an honor to serve in the Congress, and I don't feel that honor any more strongly than on a day when I can come and join the Congressional Black Caucus and the Progressive Caucus and putting forth a statement of values that I think more accurately reflects what the American people want than what they have been receiving or what they would anticipate receiving if this debate does not take place. Uh, I believe each year that these, when we have the debate on the, the budget uh, that we are debating a statement of values. And I would like to ask every member of this committee and every member of the Congress if the budgets that we have passed are a statement of their values. Uh, My colleagues uh, who have spoken before me have very eloquently uh, put forth the case uh, for our being able to go to the floor with this as an amendment uh, or an alternative, and I hope that uh, this committee will uh, will vote uh, in the affirmative on that. That was 1992. Republican George H.W. Bush was president. A year later, Democrat Bill Clinton was president. On August 2, 1993, the House Progressive Caucus met with President Clinton at the White House to discuss the budget. After the meeting, two participants talked with the press. And you've already heard from those two participants in this podcast. Here, back-to-back, talking with the White House Press Corps in 1993, are future Senate Budget Committee Chairman Bernie Sanders and future House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. They're going to pay more taxes, but my job is not to worry about them. We got hungry children in my state who need to be fed. We have working people who need jobs. And frankly, after 12 years of Reaganomics in which hundreds of billions of dollars were shifted from the pockets of working people and poor people to the rich. Do you know we have the widest gap between the rich and the poor in the industrialized world? So I don't think our job is to worry about the needs of the rich. Somebody's got to stand up for working people in this country. Well, again, I don't like, I don't think we like putting words in somebody else's Mm -hmm. mouth. I don't think that that's a concept that is alien to him. I'd like to say something about the meeting. Um, I'm Congresswoman Pelosi from San Francisco, and during the campaign, President Clinton said that working families in America should not live below the poverty level. In this package, the president took the leadership to put the earned income tax credit in at a very strong number. It will be in the bill, as we understand it now, at $21 billion. In, In putting that money in there, President Clinton honored his commitment to working families in our country and kept his promise to children that if their families worked full-time, they, would have, uh, they wouldn't live uh, below the poverty line. Now, what about more current time? On January 21st, 2020, in Des Moines, Iowa, Bernie Sanders, the original leader of the Progressive Caucus, was campaigning for president. Representative Pramila Jayapal, a Democrat from Washington, introduced him. She now leads the Progressive Caucus. The thing about Bernie Sanders is he exemplifies what I think of when I think of progressives. I'm the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, 40% of the Democratic Caucus. We are working to make that bigger with your help. And what I like 
to say is just what you see in Bernie. Progressives, true progressives, are just the first to the best and the most just idea, and then they build the movement to make that idea real. Is that right? As we end today's episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly, a reminder that you can use the C-SPAN video library to do your own searches of the Progressive Caucus or any other of the many, many caucuses in Congress. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. It's free, and with hundreds of caucuses to search for, you're bound to have endless hours of enjoyment. Thanks for listening, and happy searching. <laughs>